everyone! Welcome to another episode of Roblox Game Development. Today, I'm finally going to pick up where we've been left off for how many weeks now? Like three weeks? It's been torture. I've been wanting to make videos for you guys for a long time. Um, but I was training for a new job that I got as a software engineer. So that was actually really exciting. I actually have a like real job now. YouTube's a job, right? No. It's not a job. It's fun. Um, but what I was saying is, I'm back, I'm going to make videos for you guys, but I got a new laptop, it's a ton faster, I got a new monitor, and I got a new webcam, so you see me in 1080p, and you should see my screen in 1080p, hopefully, if everything works right. Uh, but we'll finally get back to making videos, and Psychofall, my gaming channel, We'll also get a ton of videos pumping out now, because uh, this laptop's actually fast enough to run video games, uh, so that's awesome. Okay, so to uh, last time I gave you guys an option: did you want zombies or did you want ray casting? And it, you guys voted slightly in favor of ray casting, but then I was thinking to myself. I want to teach both of these concepts. I want to teach how to raycast and I want to teach how to make zombies. But raycasting is sort of like more advanced than making zombies and zombies are really quick. We can probably make them in today and tomorrow alone. So that's probably what we're going to do is work on zombies, okay? It's really not that hard. The hardest part of making a zombie is literally going to be building him and making him look like a zombie. That's literally the hardest part, at least for me. Okay? So that's what we're going to start out with. Okay. First, let's go and we'll copy this brick. Boom. Move it out here. Okay. So we'll call the... Oh. Hold on, guys. I don't have my new... Uh, Roblox Studio set up correctly. Give me a sec. Alright, there we go. Uh, now I see everything. Okay, we'll click this brick. And we're going to name this brick Left Leg. Like that, I believe, right? We'll find out later. We'll find out later. Doesn't matter that much, actually. Alright, so we're going to pull this in. And I am, yes, I'm on the correct mode. Pull it in. Go there. Up one. Alright. Copy and paste it. Whoa. Alright, fine. Be stubborn like that. Alright. Move it over to here, right next to this guy. Copy, paste. And actually, we'll rename this piece right leg. And we'll name this torso. Alright. Copy, paste. Mm, boom. Alright. This is his left arm. I know the colors are terrible right now, guys. Just give me a second, all right? This is his right arm. And last, but most certainly not least, is his head. And this requires inserting him. Actually, huh, I hope we've been doing this all right. One second. Top surface, top surface. Studs. Yes, okay. It's all correct. Smooth. Alright, this guy needs a mesh, and I believe the mesh they use, it's not cylinder mesh, is it black mesh? No. Hold on. Let's rename it head first. Just like that. By the way, those names are case sensitive. They're critical for the humanoid, I believe. So make sure you name them correctly. Alright? Sound good? That's good. What mesh is it? I believe, is it special mesh, possibly? It might be special mesh. Yes, it's special mesh. It's kind of bad looking right now. But there we go. That's our amazing, wonderful zombie for now. I'll recolor him real quick. Let's go brown. And then the most sickly green I can find for everything else. All right, we're not gonna give this guy a face. Mm, eh, should we? Should we give him a face, guys? All right. 
search decals zombie face let's see that face looks good boom I think that's the right side right yeah that's the right side okay close that boom here's our zombie so we're gonna hit control and click all the different parts of this guy then control G name him zombie all right first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert a humanoid into our zombie and we're going to rename the humanoid zombie because humanoid means like the human person but we don't want like if we were making guns we usually search to find their humanoid by its name well we don't want it to search for humanoid in this guy because then guns that were meant only to kill zombies would also hurt players so we want to name it zombie so that it only hurts zombies our guns that are built for that okay so we've got his head blah 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 alright now for the fun part which is inserting a script into this guy so for zombies here's the concept of what a zombie is on Roblox on Roblox a zombie must groan a lot a zombie must walk a zombie must hurt you okay it's got to hurt you you can't have a zombie not hurt you and it has to follow the closest person within a range and we actually should do some more things to this guy first I believe he should be unanchored completely right well we'll try it we'll unanchor him and we will also move his arms which I believe if you alt click there we go yeah if you alt click a brick in a model it'll just let you take that exact thing there we go move his right arm eh that's bad no that's even worse okay alt there we go this zombie arm is not cooperating with me at all uh, but it's close enough for me this is probably the worst zombie arm on the face of zombie armness but oh well you people can deal with it right yeah you guys are tough enough you guys are awesome enough to deal with it there we go boom alright now I feel at least pleasantly happy about this guy let's go back to the script so what they do is they have a while true do loop most of the time there's other ways but this is probably the most efficient way we're gonna have him wait a tenth of a second every time because zombies have a slow reaction time and a tenth of a second is probably just about right okay now what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of the players in the game and we're going to check if they are close to the zombie okay Today, all we're going to do is check if there's somebody in range, okay? So, players equals game dot players get children. For i equals one, number players do. Okay, so what this is doing is it's getting all of the players in the game by going to the game dot players, getting its children. For every player, which actually we're going to use a for each loop. I don't think we have to do that though. No, we don't. For player, players in, or for I players, player in I pairs, players, there we go. So what this will do is it'll automatically give us a variable of player for every player we loop through in players, okay? So for I player in I pairs, players, blah, 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 blah. Here's what we're doing. We're just doing if player that character does not equal null oh, nil ah, then what's with all the red lines here oh see this is what you get when you do like other programming languages like C sharp Java basically everything else they don't use this thing for the not symbol they use an exclamation mark so I always do that anyway if the player's character is not nil, meaning the player is playing, they're not dead, they're not joining the game, they're not leaving the game, they're actually alive and moving around, then, we'll continue, then 
tor equals player dot character dot torso. Okay. And hmm, up here, we'll make a variable and we're going to call it torso equals script dot parent dot torso. And then down here, if torso dot position minus tor dot position dot magnitude, you can do the subtraction either way, I think. Like you can subtract the tor position from the torso or torso from tor. I don't think it really matters because I think magnitude is kind of like an absolute value. Um, I'll explain magnitude in a second. Is less than or equal to range then, and we're just going to output print player dot name dot dot to concate name is in range. Okay? So we're going to make another variable up here called range. And before we actually set this, I want to explain magnitude. Magnitude, when you take a vortex, or vertex 3, vortex 3, why can't I remember this? Uh, vector 3, okay, when you take a vector 3 value, which when you subtract a vector 3 from another vector 3, it gives you the uh, difference of the two as another vector 3, okay? It's a brand new vector 3 with the new values, which would be the differences between the other two. When you do magnitude, magnitude is a property of every vector 3 value, and magnitude is basically, if you add up all three, the x, y, and the z, it'll tell you exactly how far that is. Like, it adds up the x, y, and z together. I don't know if it actually just adds them. I think it, like, probably does some more complex algorithm. I haven't exactly seen. But you can basically see magnitude as the exact length if you were to put all of them into a line. Like, x, or wait, x is like this, kind of. Y is up and down, and z is depth. Okay, so you can see this as like that kind of line going up to the right or left, up and down, right and left, and further and closer all in one direction. Okay, it's just pointing the exact line, kind of, ish. It's not really a line, um, but that's the best way I can describe it right now. I advise you guys to go look it up to read a much more eloquent and descriptive and understandable version of this. Um, I hope I haven't made it too bad though. Anyway, so it's kind of like the number of studs when you collect all three, the x, y, and z values together. So range, we'll set this equal to 50. 50 studs away. That's the max people can be when they're in range. All right. And I'm recording on this too. That's just great. How do I, I don't like this. Stop. Yeah, don't bother me again. I record with Camtasia. It's better. All right. So now when we press, uh, I actually forgot this too. Ah, tools. Test. Play solo is F6. All right, that's right. F6. Now we don't need a player added event right now. Okay. So this F6 is going to work just fine. Ah, I knew there would be something wrong. I knew he would fall apart, but. That's okay, we still will get, we should still get this. There we go. Down at the output, player one is in range. Player one is in range. That's all I really want to worry about right now. Like I said, the hardest part is getting the zombie bricks to work. I'm not that great of a builder, guys. Trust me. Um, but the script is the main thing I wanted to worry about today. Seeing if the player was in range. Okay? Tomorrow, we'll work on this whole zombie falling apart thing. We'll work on getting the zombie to actually chase you. And then probably Wednesday, we will get the zombie to be able to switch between different people it's chasing. Okay? So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like or the dislike button. Of course, find out how you felt about this video. How you feel about me getting the new computer and the new webcam. Do you like 
the more high definition stuff or no I'm guessing you'll all probably like it but my opinion does not always match yours all right and I will catch you guys later